a decision has been made, it is the law. On April 6 of this year, the federal court decision became final that some degree of desegregation must by law begin in Dallas in the schools this fall. There have always been a few individuals in any city whose cure-all for any problem is to meet it with violence. In Dallas, these few individuals will stand alone. If they do so act, they will do so in the face of a community of hundreds of thousands of law-abiding citizens. Desegregation by order of the Federal District Court is proceeding this year in kindergarten through grade five in the elementary school. We have many uh, students enrolling in those grades on a desegregated basis, but uh, the secondary schools, junior and senior high schools, are not yet desegregated. We are following the federal court order in that respect, and this school is not desegregated. I might point out that every course that's offered in San Jacinto High School is available in one of the high schools for Negroes or in several high schools for Negroes, and we welcome our Negro students in those schools. Houston's spending per public school child is less than the rest of Texas and well below the national average. Social worker Alva C. Hayes, Jr. You think the fact that the economy here has generally been pretty good has led to a, a better life, generally speaking, for the Negro than in some other sections? Yes, you can see it every day. You can see it on the street here, these new cars. <laughs> I mean, materially, it has. Culturally, it hasn't, but materially, uh, the Negro is prospering just as much as anyone else. How are the schools here? Well, I might be stepping on someone's toes, but the schools are still backwards. You don't think the schools have kept up with the economic growth? No, I definitely don't. Not based upon integration, but based upon what the schools are offering. I mean, to keep up. Vocational training is still lagging with the space age. Houston's first Negro on the school board, elected in 1958, and recently re-elected, Mrs. Charles White. So you have a total of how many Negro children going to school with whites? About 250 uh, in 10 previously old white schools. That's out of a total uh, school population of what? Of 211,000. Well, that wouldn't seem to indicate that integration has progressed very rapidly in the schools. This is perhaps the greatest sore spot in the city of Houston. In other areas, we have accomplished integration uh, peacefully, quietly, smoothly. All of the terms that would make you know that it was successful. And the hotels, the restaurants, the theaters, and uh, places of amusement. But the Houston School Board uh, seems to put forth every effort they can to keep the status quo. The U.S. Justice Department has asked for some kind of a plan by this fall. And in what one board member called an attempt to keep the situation in local hands, the board has decided to look at a free transportation system for students in the minority to majority transfer program. Currently, those students furnish their own transportation. Members are expected to approve a plan tonight that would provide bus transportation for students from their home school to the school they're transferring to. The board member said the move has been under consideration for quite a while, but it probably won't be enough to hold off the Justice Department. So, in anticipation, they're still working on a desegregation program. It's never been the position of the board, and I don't believe the board has ever made the statement that we were going to affect a plan by the fall. The statement has always been that the Justice Department indicated to us that they wanted to plan implemented by this fall. Uh, the board has never said whether they would or would not implement a plan. It was based on could we realistically come up with a plan that would be advantageous for the community and for the quality of education we want to maintain in our schools. And if so, then we'd consider it. Otherwise, uh, we probably would not.